Okay, in this video I want to take a look at the Gemma Doherty and John Waters application to the High Court. They went to the High Court and in April, May 2020 and they were looking for an order, they were looking for a judicial review and a finding from the High Court that the measures, the regulations and the legislation introduced by the state to deal with COVID-19 and the coronavirus that legislation was unconstitutional. That's what O'Doherty and Waters were contending. Now, I've previously made a video about the costs of that case because the costs were awarded against them and they are liable for the costs of the state and the other parties in the proceedings. But this particular, there was a number of comments on that video about O'Doherty and Waters not getting a fair hearing and the judge was biased against them and the state was biased against them and the high court was biased against them and so on and so forth. I thought it would be useful to have a look at the case itself and to actually see the decision, dissect it a little bit, unpack it a little bit and have a look at exactly what we can learn in relation to judicial reviews and so on. The first thing you need to understand about a judicial review application or proceedings is that it's a two-step process. And the first step is you must go to the High Court and you must obtain leave to bring judicial review proceedings. That is the first step. And in order to have uh, your decision or your argument listened to and get this, the decision, the determination that you want, that is that the legislation and regulations are repugnant to the Constitution, you must get leave first to get a judicial review. Now, the likes of uh, the emergency measures in the public interest, COVID-19 Act 2020, and other regulations, these were the type of regulations and the type of laws that our Doherty and um, Waters wanted to have found unconstitutional. So we need to look at, or I need to look at in this video, I'm going to look at the principles that would apply to such an application. The applicant must satisfy the court in a prima facie manner of three things. One, that he had sufficient interest in the matter. Two, that the facts sworn in his affidavit would be sufficient to support a statable ground for the relief sought. And three, that the facts show an arguable case can be made for an entitlement to the relief sought. So these are the three things that the High Court is bound to look at when anybody makes an application and precisely the same principles would have applied obviously to Gemma Doherty and John Waters. The High Court, uh, Mr Justice Meenan I think, referred to the Supreme Court case of Esme versus Minister for Justice and Law Reform, a 2015 case. And in that case, the Supreme Court made reference to any issue in law can be argued, but that is not the test. A point of law is only arguable within the meaning of the relevant decisions if it could, by the standard of a rational preliminary analysis, ultimately have a prospect of success. It is required for an applicant for leave to commence judicial review proceedings to demonstrate that an argument can be made which indicates that the argument is not empty. There would be no filtering process where mere arguability to be the test without at the same time taking into account that trivial or unstatable cases are to be excluded. The standard of the legal point must be such that in the absence of argument to the contrary, the thrust of the argument indicate that reasonable prospects of success have been demonstrated. It is still required to be shown that a prima facie legal argument has been established in terms of law. The test is no different. It's a point of law which, if not balanced or outweighed by other principles, will suffice to establish the contention. This is the filter, which the leave application is designed to be in order to ensure that there is sufficient reason to disrupt administrative decisions and to litigate them. So essentially, the Supreme Court has held that there must be an arguable case. There must be a reasonable prospect of success. The argument cannot be completely fanciful. Mr. Justice Meenan also cited a case, a Groma 
uh, versus Minister for Justice and Equality, a 2016 case where Justice Birmingham stated that a point cannot be arguable if it is contrary to existing case law or if it is based on a fundamental misconception. Therefore, the applicants in this case, Ms O'Doherty and Mr Waters, would have to depose such facts in their grounding affidavit that they could make an arguable case in law that has a prospect of success. The threshold for the application for leave to bring a judicial review is obviously a low one. You only need to show that you've an arguable or you can depose facts from which an arguable case can be mounted. But it is a threshold. You do have to get over it. Secondly, the applicants must satisfy the court that they have sufficient interest in the matter to which the application relates. This means essentially that the applicant must show that he or she is personally affected by the provision that he seeks to challenge. That is, that he's been deprived of a particular constitutional right. So the Supreme Court in Mohan versus Ireland said the step of permitting a challenge to the constitutional validity of a piece of legislation should not therefore be taken lightly simply because someone with wishes, however genuinely, to have the question determined, but rather should only be taken when a person can show that they are adversely affected in reality. Courts do not exist to operate as a committee of wise citizens providing a generalised review of the validity of legislation as it is enacted, nor should courts become a forum for those who have simply lost a political argument in the legislature to seek a replay of the argument in the course in the courts courses uh, repackaged in constitutional terms so they must have an arguable case but they cannot simply go to the courts for a, a rehashing or a re-argument of basically a political argument that was lost the applicants then in this particular case in O'Doherty and Waters case grounded their application in a 34-page affidavit. It set out the narrative to the 16th of March 2020. The 16th of March 2020 is an important date because the affidavit was sworn on the 5th of May 2020. There's a big gap there from the 16th of March 2020 to the 5th of May 2020 and yet no new facts were added by the time they swore the affidavit. In their affidavit then, the applicants questioned the accuracy of the number uh, of persons affected by the coronavirus. So they were questioning the numbers that were being issued by the HSE and NEFIT and so on and so forth as being affected by the virus. They also referred to fraudulent science and referred to a statement by a former UK Supreme Court judge about the arrival of a police state and a parallel was made with Nazi Germany. That judge was not commenting on the legislation that had been challenged by um, Waters and O'Doherty, by the way. The applicants identified a number of constitutional provisions which they claimed were being breached. For example, no citizen shall be deprived of his personal liberty, save in accordance with law. And the dwelling of every citizen is inviolable and shall not be forcibly entered, save in accordance with law. Those writers, save in accordance with law, are vitally important because they qualify the right, the constitutional right. Yes, you have a constitutional right, but no, it's not absolute because it must be exercised uh, or it can be overthrown or set aside to a certain extent in accordance with law. So no citizen shall be deprived of his personal liberty, save in accordance with law. And that's in the constitutional. Anyway, Mr. Justice Meenan then determined that as the legislation provided for the detention of people in certain circumstances, the closure of premises and the prohibition of certain events to prevent the spread of the virus, every person residing in the state was affected. And this clearly included the applicants. Thus, they had the standing to bring the application. So that was one of the things that they needed to address, one of the three things they needed to address. Did they have the standing? The judge found that they did. The judge then had to address the question of whether the applicants had established an arguable case. Remember, this is one of the three uh, things that they must surmount or get past if they are to get on to the next stage of the judicial review. 
He determined the judge that no case had been made out by Waters and authority, that the constitutional rights were breached by the legislation and regulations, um, the personal rights of the citizens, the inviolability of every dwelling, the right to assembly, uh, peaceable assembly, the practice of religion are not absolutely right, absolute rights and may be restricted, may be modified. This is clear from the wording of the various articles in the Constitution. And remember, your freedom to move around the place, for example, is uh, freedom safe in accordance with law. In other words, it can be modified or restricted to a certain extent. Now, Miss O'Doherty and John Waters argued that the restrictions and limitations were disproportionate. And that's an argument. That's a valid argument. But to make an arguable case, they needed to put on affidavit some facts which, if proven, could support such a view, just as meaning held that there was a complete failure by the applicants to do so. The narrative in the applicants' affidavit ended on the 16th of March 2020, when there had been 268 cases of COVID-19 and two deaths reported. By the time of the grounding affidavit, which was sworn on the 5th of May 2020, there had been 22,248 cases and 1,375 deaths from COVID-19. But the applicants had made no reference in their affidavit whatsoever. The applicants questioned the accuracy of the figures of persons infected with COVID-19 and the deaths reported and claimed that the science involved was fraudulent. However, they offered no supportive expert opinion either in their statement of grounds or in their grounding affidavit. The judge noted that the applicants have no medical or scientific qualifications or expertise and relief on sub unsubstantiated views or relied rather on unsubstantiated views, speeches, empty rhetoric, rhetoric and sought to draw an absurd and offensive parallel with Nazi Germany. Justice Meenan found that the European Convention on Human Rights is not directly effective and the measures taken by the state as to COVID-19 cannot be invalidated on the basis that they are repugnant to the Constitution. He also confirmed that the Charter of Fundamental Rights and or EU law does not apply to domestic law. The court determined that whilst the applica applicants had standing to bring the case, they had not made any arguable case in support of their claim that the legislation was unconstitutional. They needed to do that in order to get over this first hurdle and get the leave of the High Court to bring judicial review proceedings. Furthermore, they made arguments that the passage of the legislation through the Dáil and the legal standing of the government was held to be... They made arguments about the passage of the legislation through the Dáil. They also made arguments about the government being unlawful or illegal or invalid as a consequence of uh, the changeover and resignation of ministers and so on. But the High Court held that these issues were not justiciable, that is, not a matter for the courts. Justice Meenan also held that not only did they fail to establish that they had an arguable case, he went so far as to say that the case which they wished to make was unstatable. There's actually a world of difference between having a case that's unstatable and failing to establish an arguable case. Anyway, to summarise the decision, one, the applicants, Gemma O'Doherty and John Waters, had the legal standing, had the standing to bring the case to challenge the legislation and regulations. Two, constitutional rights are not absolute, and the argument that the measures were disproportionate meant that the applicants must depose such facts on affidavit which would show that the restrictions were disproportionate and no such facts were deposed in the affidavits. Three, the applicants, with no medical or scientific qualifications, maintained the COVID-19 figures were inaccurate and the science fraudulent, but they gave no factual basis or supportive expert opinion to support these contentions. Instead, they engaged in unsubstantiated opinions, speeches, rhetoric, and a bogus historical parallel with Nazi Germany. These are not my words, these are the words of the High Court judge. Four, the applicants are not entitled to rely on the European Convention on Human Rights or the Charter of Fundamental Rights or EU law. Five, the case they made against the Eroctus was unstatable. And six, leave to bring judicial review proceedings was refused. 
I've written a blog post there looking at that decision. It's on my website, businessandlegal.ie, the full decision of the High Court Justice Meaning in that particular case is also there. There's a link in my blog post. Have a look at it if you're interested in it. Have a look at it in terms of if you're going to bring a judicial review yourself at some stage or are thinking about it. You'll see what's involved in terms of the test that you're going to have to get over, the threshold you're going to have to get over in order to get leave to bring your judicial review. This, I hope, has explained how and why the application of Gemma O'Doherty and John Waters failed for a judicial review. As I say, I will link up here on this side, I think it is, to the other video I've made about the cost situation, the costs were awarded against them. I hope you find this video useful and I hope that it will explain why they, their argument and their application failed in the High Court and I hope you find it useful. If you do, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up down below. Thanks a lot.